Hey everybody, this is Chris with Overclockers Club. If you know anything about Noctua, you know them probably for their amazing line of CPU coolers like the D15, the D15S, the old workhorse standard, the D14, but you also probably know them for their amazing line of fans. But there's something else that Noctua is also famous for. And that would be Thermal Paste. This is the NTH1 Thermal Paste, which has been around for quite some time. It is also a standard that many people swear by. Here it is in a 3.5 gram tube. Here is a 10 gram tube. But what we're here to talk about today really is the NTH2, which is the newest release and the uh, newest technology and thermal paste. We have it in the 3.5 and also the 10 gram tubes. So we'll get those boxes open and take a look at those here in a little bit and we'll do a little thermal testing. Uh, another item that we have new is the NASCW1 cleaning wipe. Here's the box of the wipes right here. You can uh, use this to clean off your GPU or your CPU in anticipation of a fresh install or if you just want to refresh your thermal paste that's been on your system for a while you need to get the old crusty, crunchy, dried out thermal paste off there, these wipes would come in handy for doing that. So we'll get these open here and see what everything looks like. Now comparing the NTH1 to the NTH2, the uh, older material which has been around since roughly 2007 is when this first came out uh, to the new stuff. Looking at the boxes, what I see uh, in the specifications, we have 2.49 grams per cubic centimeter on the original. NTH1 and then this is slightly more dense at 2.81 grams per cubic centimeter. So we go from 2.49 to 2.81. So um, the next thing here, the operating temperatures, this is minus 50 to 110 C and we have a huge swing down here on the NTH2. This is also minus 50 but it goes all the way up to 200 C. So we have a huge leap at the upper thermal end. Now hopefully you aren't running your CPU at 200 C but this has uh, been rated to withstand that temperature. So now we'll get the boxes open. I'll keep the uh, NTH1, the original type paste, on the left, and then we'll have the NTH2 on the right. So we'll open the NTH1 first. This is a 3.5 gram package. And let's see, okay, so we have one syringe there, one tube. And if we open this up carefully, I believe that's it. That's all there is in there. Okay, so it's just the tube of the thermal paste. And on the back here, we have the usage instructions. So it says if there are any residues of thermal paste from the previous installations on the CPU, uh, clean them off first. And that, that's pretty standard there. So over here we have a dot pattern, and we talk about the different types of uh, CPUs. So you've got Intel. Uh, AMD and then the larger AMD and Intel and it kind of gives you a pattern to put the dots I'll try to stay out of the glare of the light there but that's the recommendation if you've never put it on before it talks about here removal and cleaning use a dry paper towel or tissue to wipe off and then moisten the paper towel with a few drops of water to wipe clean isopropyl alcohol or cleaning wipes such as the NASC W1 which we just happen to have right here uh, are also recommended. Not necessary, but can be used. So that's what you'll find in the first package. This is the 10 gram amount. And it of course comes with the same instructions on the back and the tube is much larger as you can see there. So there's the <clears throat> Pardon me, 10 gram, and there's a three and a half gram, considerably larger. Now we'll go ahead and open NTH2. My guess is it's going to look very similar to the same three and a half gram, and it does. So there's the NTH1 and 2, very similar type of tube. However, in this one, we do happen to have some of the cleaning wipe samples. So we get three of those 
and these are the NACW1 cleaning wipes that come with that. And then this is the much larger 10 gram container and I expect it will be also much larger and it is same size as the NTH1 there's the NTH2 10 grams and inside the box same instructions but we get more of the wipes so I've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten packs of the cleaning wipes and let's see what it says there. It has the instructions and the safety instructions on there also. My guess is that includes do not eat. Do not eat the paste, do not eat the wipes, just in case you were wondering. Now we can go ahead and get the wipes open and see what this looks like. two compartments with a considerable number of wipes and this says on the box there's a 20 and the size is 15 by 12 centimeters so that's what you get in that box in case you're wondering about the pricing right now pricing is listed as for the NTH1 and the 10 gram uh, tube $14.90. The smaller 3.5 gram tube is $7.90. The wipes for 20 of them, there's 20, uh, 20 count there, that's $7.90. And we go over to the new thermal paste, the NTH2. The smaller 3.5 gram is $12.90. And then the larger 10 gram is $24.90. Now, something else interesting, it does talk about shelf life here on the back. Uh, recommended storage time before use three years recommended usage time on the CPU is up to five years and that's the same uh, same for both of these the old style and the new style I have one of the cleaning wipes here so we'll go ahead and open it open the package there and pull the wipe out I'll start first. This is the D15, a very capable, very large cooler that we're going to use for our testing. So I'll go ahead and get the wipe out. Now it is moist. And boy, it takes that old thermal paste right off. So that really cleans that up. And the next thing we want to do, of course, is clean off the CPU because it has some old crusty thermal paste on there, too. So we will go ahead and it looks like there's plenty of surface area here to clean both a CPU and the, uh, the base of a cooler. We'll give this a good cleaning all around the edges. Of course, you want to do this with everything powered off. And a good rule of thumb, I'm not going to go into the philosophy of all the different ways there are to apply the paste, but you might think more is better. This is one of those cases where more is not better. And there's what the surface of the base plate on the D15 looks like. Nice and clean. And then we'll go down here and look at the top of the CPU, get the lighting adjusted. Now we've had many, many coolers and pumps attached to this over the years, but it's not too scratched up. Now Noctua uses a special custom detergent in the pre-moistened cleaning wipes and clearly it does a wonderful job. So now we'll apply the thermal paste and we will start with the that in focus there. This is the NTH1. 
And again, there are many different ways that people use to apply their thermal paste. I usually put a glob on there about that size. And now we'll get the fans plugged in. Fan number one. Fan number two. Now we can power it up. Everything is all powered up now with the NTH1 thermal paste, the older style thermal paste that's been around for a while. And we'll look at the system now. We're 4.2 gigahertz on the overclock. Fan is manually cranked up to about 1500 RPMs and we're idling with no load at about 32, 33C. So we'll put a load on it and then watch where it goes. And we should of course see the temperature creep up. And we'll come back and see where it goes over a little bit of time. See if it stabilizes. So we've been running here for a little while, keeping the overclock at 4.2 gigahertz. Fan speed a little over 1500 RPM and our temperature seems to have stabilized. We sort of bounce back and forth between 73 and 74 and uh, we seem pretty stable now. So that is with the NT H1 thermal paste with the 4770K uh, Intel CPU. And there's the thermal paste from the first application of the NT H1. Pretty consistent across there and then here's what it looks like on the bottom of the cooler itself. So a little squish out on the sides but not too bad. And now we'll go ahead and use our wipe to clean that off so we can start fresh. And then we'll get the cooler base here too. Looks like the detergents do a pretty good job at cutting the cutting the thermal paste. So we'll get the NTH2 on there next. All right, I just gave it a quick shot of the NTH2. Get the cooler on there, and there we have a nice layer of the NTH2 applied. So we'll get the cooler on there and fired up. And now we're powered up with the. NTH2. We've got the overclock rolling there about 4.2 gigahertz. We've got our temperature around 30 C and our fan speed is about 1500. So we'll go ahead and crank up the load on the system. And we should be able to watch the temperature climb. And we'll hold the same overclock and we'll hold the same fan speed and come back in a few minutes and see where it is. So I've been running for a little while here. We're still holding the same overclock speed, same fan speed, and we're bouncing between 70 and 71 C. And that is with the NTH2. And here's a quick teaser on the next review which will be on some of the Chromax line of accessories from Noctua. So if you want to dress up your cooler, stay tuned for that review. So the testing here with my system and my setup, and I try to keep all the variables uh, the same from setup to setup. So we're using the same cooler, same fan, same fan speed, same room temperature. Uh, the only real variable there is how you apply the paste, and I try to do that as consistently as I can. But I will say that it looks like the NT H2 uh, thermal paste can keep your system a couple degrees cooler. So if that's important to you, the extra expense for the NTH2 might be worth it. Otherwise, the NTH1 certainly 
is, uh, is well proven over the years to be uh, a wonderful thermal paste. And we also have these NASCW1 wipes. These are to clean your system up, whether you're doing a fresh install or if you've got an older system, uh, five, six, seven years old, and you want to put some new thermal paste on there, you might want to use these wipes. So this is Chris with Overclockers Club. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.